Hey, how's everybody doing today? Uh, Clint, the audio and photographer guy here today. Um, I just thought I would send out 2022 with an unboxing. So it is the season for rebates, for lens rebates. So and the uh, uh, since I've got into the Fuji Film GFX system, the medium format uh, system, I'm trying to build a smaller set of lenses than I'm used to and I'm selling off some other lenses to help pay for them but uh, I picked up a new one so I figured I would unbox it on camera so this is the 45 to 100 the GF 45 to 100 uh, which is kind of their uh, sort of normal zoom, uh, 36 millimeter to 79 millimeter equivalent in full frame terms. Um, so it's a little, um, Fuji zooms, by the way, they're, they're, um, in the GFX series, once you're in medium format, like you're already getting ridiculous quality. So there's not a whole lot of quality loss with the zooms. Uh, although the primes are still a little better, but the zooms are so good that um, if you're coming from full frame or APS-C, you'll be kind of shocked at the image quality. So, this is the newest one, I think, well, except for the ultra-wide, but the newest normal zoom. They had a 32 to 64, and uh, then they came out a non-stabilized 32 to 64, which is... Uh, wide like a 24 to 55 millimeter and that's really just up to the normal uh lens um i got the 35 to 70 which is their uh, kit lens but when you stop it down one stop it's like it's a razor so i'm i'm wondering although i found it a little short on the long end let's say i'm wondering um uh, if uh, this one's going to be better. So I want to compare them, um, but also give me some more long reach. Um, I thought that I was going to get a wide angle anyway, like the 30 millimeter, or they have a 30 millimeter tilt shift lens coming out, which I have to see what that's going to cost, but that one's really appealing to me. Uh, for landscapes and cityscapes so I can get those converging lines vertical right in camera and the shift ability will allow me to do stitched panos and correct for convergence it's it's pretty neat concept but that's on the wide end so this is the normal lens this is the middle lens this is the lens that essentially you use the most um, my as far as the lens that's on my xt3 now that's the 16 to 55 that's the normal lens so that's like this equivalent in APS-C and that lens is on the camera most of the time all right so we got owner's manual stuff here some kind of card we got a lens bag looks like it was never open which is good a little foam and an empty box otherwise and here's the lens um, pretty uh, oh yeah it's new lens hood it's a big big diameter hood anyway uh, this is an 82 millimeter filter thread that's a little a little annoying. I kind of wish it was a 77. Oh, that is a chunk. <laughs> that is a chunk of a lens. I uh, kind of wish it was a 77 millimeter because I already have those filters. 82 is not only it means I have to buy new ones, but they're even more expensive than the 77. Uh, 77 is a more common size. Um, but this is it. So. Uh, they had a $500 rebate right now, so can't pass up a, a rebate. You know, I don't want to spend $500 more when I decide I really want it. 
Uh, so, and right now they have extended returns till February, so I was going to do a shootout between these and see if it's really worth the almost, well, three and a half times as much for this one. Um, this is made in Philippines, this is made in Japan. Uh, this is a lot heavier. Uh, I would say three times heavier. Um, but some of the reviews, yeah, that thing is beautiful. Some of the reviews, uh, there's more corrected optics in here. So there's a ED glass, there's like three a spherical, there's a super ED glass element. And uh, more elements than the 35 to 70, so I think more corrected. And um, also the one thing that's interesting about a zoom lens is it's it's zoom range most of the medium format zooms are very short range so like a let's say you had a 50 to 100 that would be a, a two times range because it's zooming to twice the focal length of where at the of the wide end so most medium format zooms are like that uh, a lot of the consumer zooms you know they'll say 20x zoom and and uh, you don't know why the picture never really looks that great. But uh, 20 x 20 times optical zoom is insane. Like the same light going through all the elements has to produce a super wide angle image and then an image that's like a telescope on a moon, you know. Uh, and it just can't correct for that. So most of the medium format, since the sensor is capable of such resolution, um, most of them are very short zoom ranges. So this is just over a 2x zoom. Uh, so 45 to 100. Uh, it's the same thing with the other zooms. They have the 100 to 200. They have the 32 to 64. They almost always try to stick to 2x. Uh, 35 to 70, you know, it's exactly two times. Um, and uh, you can you can build a lens, I think, with very little compromises with um, such a short zoom range. But anyway, this thing is a chunk. Oh, yeah. It does extend a bit. It's very, uh, it's firm but smooth. You can tell it's a quality uh, optic. Of course, I have to test it yet. But everybody I've I've read the, the reviews on it, and they there's a lot of people that say it's the best lens optically that they've ever used, um, and that's that's saying something for a. For Zoom, you know, they say it's basically perfect in every way, so they couldn't want for for more. Um, the one thing is it opens up to f4. It sounds like it's not very fast lens, uh, so it's not going to blur backgrounds out like cream them out like a the 110 f2 will. Um, but um, they say when you zoom into 100, it's still going to give you pretty good background blur because the Aperture actually is affected by the crop factor, which is 0.79, so it actually, an F4 actually gives you the background blur because of the larger sensor of something more like a three, F3.2. Um, so almost a 2.8 lens. And, and when I would use a 2.8 lens, I would actually stop it down a little bit anyway. Um, so should still give some good portrait lengths. And I hear this is a great fashion lens, my purpose is mostly landscapes, so I have to balance the the not quite as wide of an angle as this one. This one goes out to 35, um, but um, the little extra telephoto and the little more weight of this one. Uh, this one is optically stabilized. That's um, that's really cool. So if I do shoot weddings, uh, I, I do them very occasionally. Um, but if I get back into it and I want to produce something awesome, um, this is going to be the lens to use. Like this is the lens for weddings. Handheld, walking around, you got optically stabilized lens and you have an image stabilized sensor uh, in the f either of the current GFX camera bodies. Uh, so together, they actually give you an extra half a stop, they say, of uh, handhold ability. So it's like, it's like four or five stops, and then it's another half stop when you combine the stabilization in the lens and the camera body. They, they act like they work at the same time, kind of in concert, so that's pretty cool. Um, 
it is nice and nice and smooth but I'm anxious to see the results from these sorry I don't have any results yet I'm just unboxing it now of course uh, these medium format <laughs> lenses always have this big big convex uh, rear element um, one thing that drives me nuts is people that set the camera down on the mount um, yeah the glass isn't on the end but your your highly machined mount and all your contacts are so you don't want to set that down on you know a concrete wall or something you're not going to damage the optic but you could damage the mount so if it's not on the camera put it on your on the rear cap it's a huge cap but you just pop it on like that uh, another thing people mention is the weather sealing in in all these reviews i see they say oh it's weather sealed because you can see there's a gasket right here like that's not that's not all the weather sealing that it has it has 11 seals so everywhere there's a break in the body you know there's a there's a line on each side of the zoom ring there's a line on the side of the focus ring there's all there's a break on each side of the aperture ring there's a seal at each one of those spots um, and then there's seals in the zoom so when you zoom out and it gets wet you don't just zoom it back in and your water goes into your lens uh, and there's a seal around the switches any kind of switch on the body so it's weather sealed all over it's not just this little rubber band or o-ring that they have on the end of the lens although that is part of it that helps too it's not to keep the water out necessarily of the camera entirely it's to keep it out of the optics you don't want optics with water in them that'd be horrible um i don't trust them 100 percent but if i'm out if i'm out and it gets you know drizzled on it's i'm not gonna worry about it i'm not gonna go stand in a waterfall or anything though um i did uh I, I rarely shoot in the rain, but I did shoot with my uh, X-H2 with the 16 to 80 on it, and I didn't worry at all. It was fine. I'm just like, whatever, they're, they make them for this, you know. If it, if it does fail, then maybe that's a warranty issue, because they say it is sealed, so. Um, so anyway, I'm pretty anxious to see how this works. Um, they say it should be pretty good so I'm hoping it's a little better corrected for distortion because um, there is a decent amount of distortion on the 35 to 70 uh, it's a lot fewer elements um, but uh, so let's correct it but they have a profile for the lens in the camera body so the camera body corrects for that distortion but it's going to use resolution to do that that's one thing that people don't get so if the lens has distortion like pin cushion or barrel distortion right and the camera fixes it oh it's got a profile built in well it's great that it fixes it because your end result's going to look pretty good but it's got to take resolution to do that it's got to move pixels crop pixels and to straighten those lines right so if you can have a lens that's built without distortion to begin with then you're much better off right that's my theory anyway and I think this probably does that because for one it doesn't go as wide and uh, it goes a little bit longer so I think I think when you have a zoom that goes really wide I think that's when you have to compensate a lot for distortion because every millimeter wider that the lens goes is increasingly more and more change in angle of view it, like it speeds up like going from a hundred millimeters to 101 millimeters you wouldn't even notice the difference but going from 16 millimeters to 15 millimeters it's like ooh, that got a lot wider so anyway I'm just kind of rambling here let's take a look at the hood uh, I'm an optics uh, I don't know zealots is that the right word but if you haven't gathered that by now, I have a problem with lenses and I'm always in search of the perfect lens. Okay. So there it is all together. Um, that is a beast. It's a chunk, but um, 
I guess they, they say uh, that if you have one lens for the GFX system, if you were to buy one lens, this is the lens. This is the one you want. So um, I also want to compare it to the 45 because I, when I bought the 45, which is this one, the 45 Prime, uh, two eight lens, I didn't know that I was getting this yet. So this one goes to 45 and they say once you stop down like one stop, like you can't tell the difference. So that kind of makes this one redundant to me, uh, except this one does open up to 2.8. So I could do, and it's a lot lighter, so I can carry this around a little easier and I can shoot portraits wide open and not worry about having to stop down because it's not a zoom, it's a prime. It, it has a bit more sharpness to the corners, they say, or all the uh, resolution chart tests I've seen say that. So we'll see. It'll be interesting to see all three lenses because all three of these go to 45 millimeters, which is like a 35 or 36 millimeter full frame equivalent. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. I know wide open, this one is going to perform the worst. It just is. Um, but the results I've seen stop down one stop on this make it a whole lot better. So it's going to be a lot more interesting. This is also the slowest lens. So at 45, this one only goes open to like F5-ish. It's all these fractional apertures nowadays. Uh, F4, this is a constant F4. So no matter where you zoom it, um, it's going to be at F4. And I think F4 is going to perform, it's my thought on this, F4 on this is going to perform a lot better than... The 35 the kit lens will when wide open which this one only goes from f 4.5 to f 5.6 it's a variable aperture zoom but you can't beat that portability so we'll see and then f 2.8 on the uh, gf 45 so the fastest lens the lightest lens the most flexible, let's say, in all, in all situations. But we're going to find out. Anyway, that's that. I didn't want to see a rebate go without uh, at least knowing for sure that that's either the one I want or don't want. So really, I'm going to put these two against each other, and then I'll probably get a 30 millimeter of some kind. And then the telephoto, I'm going to wait on the, uh, the telephoto longer than 100 millimeters. Uh, if I get into portraits seriously, and I'm going to start probably with this lens, um, because I've bought some really, I've bought the best portrait lenses all for the Nikon system. I bought them for the APS-C system, and it's a very expensive optic, and then I don't use it that much, so I don't want to uh, just waste my money. But I know that 110 F2 is something special, so we'll see. Um, but for now, I'm going to be doing more cityscapes and landscapes. Um, so, skylines, waterfalls, that kind of stuff. And, and some studio photography. So, some tabletop still life stuff. Uh, anyway, I have more content on that coming. I hope everybody had a good year. Uh, it has been, it's been interesting for me. Um, but it's been a year of some personal growth which is which is nice i uh i quit drinking um almost nine months ago It'll be nine months ago in four days uh, i'm gonna have a video on that uh, which i shot right after i stopped drinking and then i'm gonna have a follow-up to that so um got a lot of bike riding in and uh, lost 30 pounds um, I'm back up five or six just because of the holidays, but, um, um, so made some progress towards something, right? So hopefully that continues in 2023 and, uh, same for you guys. Uh, let me know what you would like to see more of. Um, I have some more audio content coming. I know people are mad if I film too much of one thing for too long because I don't I don't know why you subscribe you know I don't know what you what you're looking to see um, you know it doesn't say uh, oh you subscribe because of this so I just make content that I'm into and what I do 
So, um, anyway, thanks for, thanks for, uh, sticking by and, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Happy New Year.